All right, so uh, to export this, you want to click on this little blue cube. I'm going to set this to 4K. If you're using the free version, it will be locked at 1K. Uh, and then you just want to go to the build section here and just add wherever you want these files to be saved. And then hit execute build. There's a couple things that I needed to do that I forgot to do. One of them was, one of these was not set to meter, it was normalized. I have already exported as a test and it looks like my name on this one, if I named it mass before it, it reverted back to export. But, uh, and I needed to set this to PNG8. I think by default it was set to EXR. Okay, so let's take a look at the outputs. So here's the wall demo high and low. They look fine and the size of the file seems to make sense based on what I, what I added in terms of the poly count. You can see the color out. We can just open it up real quick. So there's what that looks like. And again, this is a 4K map. And here's our mask. Like if I wanted to use this, I don't really anticipate using this for this uh, example, but I will definitely use it in the next example where we build a, a height map based uh, terrain. Anyway, so now I want to show you what the geometry looks like. I'm going to need to open up uh, these files in ZBrush because I don't have a better way to do that. It'll take forever in Unreal. So just one moment. So here we are in ZBrush. You don't have to have ZBrush for this, uh, this project. I just wanted to show you what this looks like. This is the low poly. And you can see it procedurally adds more geometry where it needs to, and it will use less where it can. So that's kind of a nice feature. And then for the high poly, it looks like this. So there's definitely a lot of stretching happening in these areas. So that's not going to look great, but you know, whatever you can go in and throw some erosion or you can reduce the height. There's a, there's a lot of things that, that you could do for this area here to, to fix it up that I just don't have time to figure out during the demo. I just want to show you the, the big beats here, but as you can see over here, it, it looks pretty nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this into painter and bake a normal map. The UVs for this are already going to be set to zero and one. So it's just a plane by default. So it's going to be very simple to do that, uh, which you can also see here if you look at the uh, the color. It just goes from zero to one. Okay, let's open this up in Painter. So we'll just go File, New, Select, go to the Demo, grab the Low Poly, hit OK. We're going to go to Mode, Bake Mesh Maps, Go ahead and grab that high poly. I'm going to set the anti-aliasing to 4 and the output size to 4K. That all looks good. We'll let it load in here. Okay, we can go ahead and bake our textures. I'm just going to bake everything even though I really only need uh, AO and normal. All right. So here we are with the bakes. Obviously a lot of stretching and stuff in this area, but the rest of it is I think usable. Even this area here looks okay. So now we're going to go and export this. I'm going to go to File, Export Textures. We will scroll down to Mesh Maps. I'm going to select the right location. Make a new folder in here. And then we want to set this to 4K, do this as PNGs. That's all looking good. We'll go ahead and export. So now you can see over here, here are all of our bakes, the normal map and the AO. You can close this and we'll, we'll take a look at this in Unreal. So this is a prior demo. I'm just going to go ahead and make a new folder here and we'll reuse the same level. So we'll import our assets. We want to grab the low. We'll go ahead and import there. We can grab our color. And in the bakes, we'll grab the AO and the normal. So we need to do a rotation on that, rotate it 90 degrees. We'll go over to modeling mode, transform and bake that transform data. So now it uh, thinks this is its new zero. We'll make a material. Just 
call this one M demo. It's going to be super basic. We'll go into a lot more detail on how to make a proper landscape material shortly. So I'm going to drag the normal map in, plug that into normal. We'll drag the AO and plug that into ambient occlusion, and then we'll grab the color and connect that to the base color input. Go ahead and save this. There are no parameters here. Oh, I actually, I think I'm gonna change my roughness. I'll show you a little trick on the roughness. So we don't have anything that we've created for the roughness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a lerp, linear interpolate, and the roughness values can be pretty high. So I'll say like 0.7 and not 0.9. And then for the alpha, I'm just going to pull off one of these, the grayscale image. So basically like where this value is brighter, we're going to be piping out this one and where it's darker, it'll be this one and it's never going to get all that dark. So it's mostly just going to be kind of bright, but that's fine. We just want a little variation. And now we can just, let's open up this guy. We'll select this material. I am not going to make a material instance because it's, like I said, there's just nothing that I need to modify here. Go ahead and save this. And there you go. So it's not the most interesting in terms of its texture, but it's probably effective. You could always, you know, hop back into um, Gaia and just create a different uh, different textures and and uh, export and it would it would be perfectly acceptable to just drop that instead so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this just control actually we'll do control c control v so it stays in place i'm gonna scoot it over a little bit i'm gonna scale it negative one or x. and you know there's just a, we're just off by a by a tiny amount here. I'm not sure which direction that is. So that's going to be this way. So you would probably want to you know do that do that right. Maybe a DCC tool or something. But that's the idea, right? So we can just grab these two together. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a merge, make a new object. We can hit accept. And there is your far off landscape thing that tiles. Try that one more time. Right. And if you're looking at it from the right, the right angle, it's not too noticeable with what's going on with the tiling. And you could also just go in and modify the geometry so that you don't have this peak repeating. Right. There's a lot of things that, that could be done. And in terms of cleaning up this flat stuff, that's uh, that's fairly easy as well. Let me go ahead and just run you through that. So if we go down to the attributes, we can generate polygroups. We're going to do this from normal deviation and hit accept. And now we can go to model, polygroup edit. Oh, you know what? This is, uh, this, that's just too heavy. There's a setting we can modify somewhere for that, but in the meantime, we'll just try this again. Attributes, normal deviation. Let's see if it'll let us do it on this one. Model, polygroup edit. And you can just delete it and hit accept. So that might be a little bit easier to use if you're crashing this into something. You won't have a giant flat plane sticking up. So that is the uh, I think relatively straightforward process for creating procedural landscape geometry that you can then use directly in Unreal with a simple little material. And it's reasonably effective if you spend a little bit more time on it. So here's an example of that. And the next series of videos, we'll run through the process of how to set something like this up, which is a landscape actor that's using a height map generated in Gaia, as well as a texture. Um, and then in the in the final series of videos, we will look at setting up 
an actual landscape material, layered landscape material that uses Megascans materials and has some really nice displacement on it. And we'll be using masks generated in Gaia to set up the, the landscape layers. So going to be good. Stick around. See you in the next one.